Day's drama unveiled, Holly's heartbreak, Paulina's health crisis, and a shocking Christmas confession. Dive into the twists and turns on days of our lives as secrets unravel during the festive season. From Johnny's forgotten birthday to Holly's drunken love revelation, Salem's Christmas takes an unexpected emotional turn. Watch as Paulina's health scare adds tension, and Kate's missing ring sparks a jaw-dropping moment. Plus, Suzanne Rogers spills on the cherished Horton Christmas tradition. Don't miss the drama-packed holiday special on Days of Our Lives. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. After watching these videos, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. A concerned Chanel insists Paulina go to the hospital while a lonely Holly drunk dials Johnny. Today on Days of Our Lives, Chanel forces her mother to get checked out, Holly drafts a declaration of love, and John's holiday festivities take a somber turn. Johnny finds a sullen Holly scrolling on her phone in the D. Mara living room. After learning everyone is out, he asks how she's doing after the loss of their baby brother. She says she's not great, but she'll distract herself by watching It's a Wonderful Life, hopefully with him. He's sorry, but he's watching it at Chanel's. She sighs that she'll just spend her birthday alone. Johnny can't believe he forgot and proposes they eat cake before he leaves. She doesn't want a pity party. Besides, she has plans to celebrate with her mother tomorrow. He asks about Tate. She recounts him walking out on her at the bistro. It's over between them. Johnny tells her to wait there and heads off. Marlena and Kayla enter the pub to Kate, who presents them with an angel-themed dinner menu. After their ordeal last year, they toast to another Christmas in Salem. Outside, John and Steve try to wrap their minds around the ISA not being able to enhance Victoria's kidnapper's face in the photo. John says at least Maggie kicked Constantine to the curb, and he's on his way out of Salem. Back inside, the women sit at a long, festively decorated table as Kate pours martinis. She wants them to get matching tattoos to mark their trip to heaven. Their men arrive, and the friends toast to surviving another crazy year in Salem. As they sit, they reflect on how long they've known each other, including the years some of them were presumed dead. John recalls Steve being his first friend in Salem. He flashes to lying with bandages over his face while Steve played the harmonica. John thanks Steve for caring for him when everyone was after him as the pawn. He doesn't know where he'd be today without him. In the square, Chanel questions Paulina sleeping so much lately. She attributes it to work, which is why she's shopping on Christmas Eve. She brings a hand to her neck while clearing her throat. Chanel helps her to a table where she drinks water. Paulina has a coughing fit, leading Chanel to worry about her trouble swallowing. Chanel then notices a lump on her mother's neck. Over Paulina's insistence it's nothing, Chanel declares they're going to the hospital, right now. While waiting in the hospital lobby, Paulina bemoans being there on Christmas Eve. She wants to leave, but Chanel remains firm that Paulina take care of herself before anything else. At the mansion, Johnny returns to Holly with a cake he had delivered from Sweet Bits. As he adds candles, she tells him she's 17, so pretty much an adult. It's also the age of consent in their state. As her protective big brother, Johnny doesn't want to know how she knows that. He gets a call from Chanel, who tells him they're at the hospital. He says he's on his way and makes his apologies to Holly. At the hospital, Paulina issues orders to someone over the phone. Chanel reprimands her mother for working as Johnny shows up. Paulina tells him to go enjoy his holiday because there's nothing he can do to help. He disagrees and rushes off. When he returns, Johnny tells Paulina there's an exam room all ready for her. It helps when there's a wing named after your family. Chanel thanks Johnny for coming to the rescue. I wouldn't be anywhere else, he says. 
Alone at the mansion, a sulking Holly turns off her movie. She flashes to Johnny pouring scotch into his drink after fencing. She doesn't think anyone will know if she has a taste and pours herself a drink. Happy birthday to me, she dead pants. She proceeds to choke on her first sip. At the pub, Steve plays, Oh Holy Night, on the harmonica. Privately, John tells Marlena how lost he felt when Steve found him, and then she really found him. He recalls giving her the charm bracelet which she's wearing now. John tells everyone how blessed he feels to be surrounded by so many people he loves. He doesn't know who he was before, but John Black is one lucky man. As Kate passes out drinks, she realizes her ring is gone. She hope it didn't end up in one of the pies she made. As John gulps his drink, he chokes. He pulls out Kate's diamond ring from his mouth. Relieved, Kate recounts fearing she lost it forever on the fishing boat and flashes back to Roman's bedside proposal. At the D. Mara mansion, Holly powers through to finish her drink. She then drunkenly drafts a very long text declaring her love to Johnny. She realizes she can't send it because it would ruin everything. She knows if he loved her, he would have stayed with her on her birthday. But he doesn't care. No one cares. After she settles Paulina in the exam room, Johnny tells Chanel about having retinoblastoma as a kid and how he had surgery during the holidays. She can't believe she didn't know about it, but he assures her he's okay. He's very lucky in so many ways. He urges her to keep the faith regarding her mom. Johnny gets a call from Holly. She drunkenly yells at him for leaving her alone to hold Chanel's hand. She drops a glass that shatters and then yells, You're a big fat jerk, Johnny DeMera. After he hangs up, Chanel encourages Johnny to go check on Holly. At the mansion, Holly cringes, wondering what she just did. Later, Johnny returns to find Holly passed out on the couch. He jostles her. She wakes up long enough to apologize about the glass before passing out again. Johnny covers her with a blanket. After calling Johnny to check on Holly, Chanel sits with her mother as she waits for the doctor. Chanel suggests they call Abe to tell him not to come to Christmas. Paulina declares she will be home, and Abe will be coming over. Paulina promises her daughter she will be fine. At the pub, Steve recalls Kayla dressing up as Santa to hide from Victor. When Steve notes Victor was his first boss in Salem, John calls him a tough son of a bitch who basically owned him. Then, he became his father-in-law and friend. Victor knew everything about this past, and he took all those secrets to his grave. John's grateful to have them stay there forever. Steve looks off pensively. As they all wrap presents for the kids at the hospital, Roman gets a call from Julie. She's having unexpected additional guests and needs more pies. When Roman mentions one of those guests is Constantine, Steve angrily reacts. Meanwhile, a somber John admits to Marlena all the talk of the past got to him. Next on Days of Our Lives, the Hortons hang their ornaments and Tate's over his parents. Today's next update. Suzanne Rogers previews Day's Christmas tradition. The beloved Day's star says the Hortons will gather together once again this holiday season. For decades, the Horton family and friends, which includes Suzanne Rogers and her character Maggie, have gathered to hang treasured ornaments on the family Christmas tree on Days of Our Lives. Soap Hub chatted with Rogers about this year's episode which drops tomorrow on Peacock. Suzanne Rogers, A Merry Horton Christmas Maggie moved forward with her life after her beloved Mickey passed away by marrying Victor. However, she's always remained a member of the Horton clan, as evidenced by her presence at Tom and Alice's home on Christmas Eve for the family gathering. This year is no exception. It was nostalgic, Rogers tells Soap Hub of getting together earlier this year to shoot the Horton family gathering, where ornaments that display the names of past and present loved ones are brought out.
you see the names of people who are no longer with us. It brings back a lot of memories. In real life, you may look at pictures, but on days, we reflect by looking at the ornaments with names on them and through pictures. The show established a while ago that although Maggie may have a new last name, she'll always be considered a Horton. That was a question in my mind, Roger says about Maggie still having a place in Salem's first family. It would be so easy for that to happen. I'm glad that the powers that be keep me viable. Earlier this year, Rogers celebrated 50 years as Maggie Simmons Horton Kiriakis on days. One reason that the Hortons are so dear to Maggie is that they were, in a way, her first family, as Maggie's parents had died when she was so young. She didn't have a family, Rogers points out. Yes, she gained another family, but she didn't want to lose her first family. The Hortons stuck by Maggie throughout. They mean a lot to Maggie. They always will. Some soaps tape holiday episodes in November, but because of Day's production schedule, the Peacock series shoots Christmas episodes sometimes six months earlier. In my mind, I just say I'm celebrating it twice, Rogers says with a smile. I love Christmas. Thanks for watching this videos. Please hit the subscribe button for more updated news.